Welcome to the 2004-2005 Leeds United season review. The first one outside the Premiership, a season when we've defied the critics and started to rebuild this great club. Norman, you've seen many ups and downs at Leeds United over the years. What were you expecting of life in the Championship? Well, I think we finished higher than I expected because uh, I had an awful feeling that we were going to do a Sheffield Wednesday. Go all the way down where we started. All right, looking at the way we've played and everything else, the football hasn't been pretty, but it's been effective. And to finish where we have, when the first ball was kicked, I would have settled for that there and then because uh, things didn't look good. There's players come and gone, and, and I think there'll be more for next season. But as long as we're in this division and we've survived, that is the most important thing to me. As 14 unbroken seasons of top flight football came to a tearful end, the scars of disappointment would take time to heal. But that unrelenting pride would most definitely remain as the club once again prepared to rebuild and look forward to the future with a season of change lying in store. I remember sitting on the 27th of June in the Thorpe Arch and I looked at the board behind me and the squad was looking paper thin to say the least and uh, I knew it was going to be a major challenge this year um, bearing in mind that we had to sell you know everybody and anything that could move so uh, I just looked around and I felt that I needed first and foremost uh, to look at my staff and so I decided to reduce the ratio of coaches from uh, 10 to 1 down to about 5 to 1 and I brought in Steve Agnew, um, Adrian Boothroyd, obviously Sam Ellis uh, myself and we really went a coaching orientated uh, management squad this year and then really after that it was then to look at the players and try and uh, the budget that I was given um, was cut halfway through which made it very difficult um, players that I'd earmarked to try and go for in August were then not available to me and uh, I think it culminated on the first day of the season Derby County at home uh, on the Friday we signed three players on deadline day um, Steve Guppy, Craig Hignett and Brian Dean and that then gave me a bench to play against Derby on the following day so things were as tight as that. In one of the most major overhauls of players in the club's history some remained, some returned, some would get their chance and some joined with great anticipation of being part of the Elland Road revolution. That's why you know all the players are here and they want to play for Leeds United, it's a massive club you know, uh, they've got to turn out 30,000 every week. You see the ground, you see the facilities, and it is a big club. And if, uh, if you give any player the opportunity to be part of Leeds United and take them back to the Premiership or, or take part in helping them get back in the Premiership, you know, they'll, they'll throw themselves at it. The blend of experience and youth would be a major theme throughout the season. And with the signing of Paul Butler, the manager had his new captain. We needed someone who who for me could take out onto the pitch the things that I wanted and uh, but that when we were under pressure that they would lead from the front and, and inspire people around them and Paul Butler has always had that capability I think that's been recognised by many managers um, at his previous clubs and uh, I, I knew of Paul Butler and, and what he could give and how he led people and, and I just felt it was that was of paramount importance and, and my word how that has proven to be so true. I've played under good captains down the years with Kevin Bowler, Pat Sunderland, Steve Bold up there and then now Quinn was captain and then obviously went out of Wolves and Dennis Irwin was there with Paul Ince. So you just try and take bits off each of them and uh, try and be yourself and try and get the respect first and foremost to the dressing room and the players in there and they'll give the respect back. And then just be yourself out on the pitch. I don't go out there, I'm the one that wears the armband, but I expect another 11 captains out there with me as well. So with much of the new look squad assembled, all eyes were now firmly fixed on the new look championship. With the favourites for the top, and those for the drop already forecasted. My feelings were that it was going to be a difficult season. Um, I think we'd already been tipped to for third, uh, third choice for relegation behind uh, Rotherham and Gillingham, uh, and many of the top soccer pundits couldn't see how Leeds could, with all the you know major players that were leaving and, and what was left, how we could assemble a side for, for for nothing and compete in this division, when I think everybody knew that we were going to be the biggest club, <clears throat> uh, and our status was such that we were the team that everybody wanted to beat. The new season would kick off at home to Derby and under the sweltering summer sun, it was the boys in all white who would shine, but there would be some early wake-up calls in the opening month. 
And helpfully flicked on by Ricketts and Joachim is away. Julian Joachim in the clear, it's Joachim! And it is wide. One ball down the channel is going to find Joachim and he's got behind them again. It's Julian Joachim! And I think Lee Camp just made the save. Radaby won a strong challenge. Ricketts. And now Richardson. Might open up here for Richardson. That's a good try! Wonderful goal from Fraser Richardson. The first for Leeds United under Kevin Blackwell. It's wonderfully curled past the goalkeeper. And delight for Leeds in the sun on the opening day. Byfield now for Julian. Hits it left footed. Takes a wicked deflection. And Neil Sullivan was beaten. And Gillingham were a goal to the good. Adjiman now for Gillingham, stretching the Leeds defence once again. There's Roberts. And Roberts places it past Neil Sullivan. And Gillingham are now two up. Leeds looking for something to get back in this game. Here's Guppy now. Can he get a good ball in? To the back post and there's Pugh. To pull a goal back for the away team. And that could be a lifeline for Leeds United. It's now 2-1. That was Olaf Jana helping it on to Cameron. Miller's running through the middle. He's got in between defenders. He goes down. And the referee says penalty. In the last five minutes of the game. And Michael Dubry might be in trouble here. Referee Graham Laws is pointing to him. Having given the penalty, I think Dubry stands little chance of staying on the field. He certainly got the ball, but there was heavy contact with Miller as well. And Wolves had the chance to take the lead and inflict United's second away defeat in the week. It's Miller against Neil Sullivan. What can he do? It's a super save by Sullivan. And away to safety by Craney. And it stays nil-nil. That's a crucial save by Sullivan. It might earn United a point. Late in the game, United corner here at Molyneux. In it goes to the back post. That was Dean, and it's off the line by Olaf Injana. And away by Wolves. Maybe the danger not yet clear. Closing stages of the game. Here's Jermaine Wright. And behind for a corner. Dean so close. I mean, at the start of the season, we were trying to get a few points. We, we won at Derby, uh, and that got us off a, a good start. And, and you're kind of hoping to, to get as many points as you can. Like I say, people were, were, were betting us to go down, and, and you know, to get a good run at the start was was important. I knew Kenny anyway from, from our Scotland days, and I know what kind of player he is. And, and uh, we did a little bit of homework. Oji, uh, goalkeeping coach, spent a lot of time on me when I first came up, and. and uh, you know, I had a, a few things to sort out, and, and to be fair, he really got hold of me and, and, and got me into shape, and, and you know, got me ready to to start playing football again. Because you do need a lot of work after being out for so long, and, and we'd done a little bit of homework, and we kind of had half an idea where he was going to go, and I knew the kind of player he was anyway, and guessed right and, and made the save. This is Fraser Richardson. He did that nicely. Oh, Guppy did well. It's a tremendous goal from Steve Guppy. His first for United. And we're only half away. Evans. Oh, it's going to be a penalty. The referee has pointed to the spot. The United players don't like it. And Guppy is protesting. Well, he's trying to get out the way. Can Sullivan say the second penalty in consecutive games? He cannot, it's Andy Reid who has equalised for Forrest. There's a handy flick, Joachim, oh he's done tremendously, away from Morgan, Joachim! And that is a wonderful save by Gerrard. It's been a very tight affair in the opening quarter of this game at Ellen Road. The leads come again now through Butler. Good ball into the back post, there's Ricketts. Off the crossbar, but Danny Pugh's following up. Good save by Craig, but this time Pugh scored. That's his second goal for the club. Wonderful build-up from Leeds. Great header by Michael Ricketts. The keeper was beaten, but there was Pugh to smash home the rebound. Gray did really well to save the first attempt, but he could do nothing 
about Pugh's follow-up. I'm sure we'll see that celebration many times in the future. Yeah, it was nice. I had a good start to the season. I got a few goals and that always helps. It's massive to score a goal at Ellen Road. Um, I was just delighted to score a goal, so yeah, the celebration showed that. August drew to a close with this defeat to Sheffield United as early expectations gave way to a startling reality and Kevin Blackwell's men were getting to grips with the demands of the championship. Well, that was always going to be the case when you had so many new players. And we were talking here about uh, seven, eight debuts on the first game of the season at home to Derby. Um, we have to remember Neil Sullivan arrived the day he hadn't played for me, only he played the weekend before at Hibs. So Neil Sullivan hadn't had a, a pre-season with us, Brian Dean hadn't, Steve Guppy, Craig Higner hadn't, and quite a few, I think we signed a local Serge Branco, and he didn't play. So quite a few of the players that were coming actually hadn't done even a pre-season with us. And we were literally throwing players together before games and, and hopefully you know, trying to work on as much as we could through the, uh, through, the, through the week. And then bearing in mind that Danny Pugh, Fraser Richardson, uh, Simon Walton and Kilgallen were all in, and, and Aaron Lennon were all on the age of 20 with no professional games under their belt. So they got no experience to call on. And they were also then playing out of position, in positions that were totally alien to them and, and not knowing quite how to deal with that. And, and uh, so it, that was really a recipe for um, lack of consistency. The first, well, the first game of the season, uh, we got Derby County, and we, we were the ones that got picked out for Sky at 12 o'clock. So that was the start of things to come at Leeds United because we knew we'd be the spotlight in this league, and we would get put on Sky an awful lot. And then we, we kicked off from that, and it was our first away game. I think Gillingham away won it. So that was basically a, a awakening to the Championship, a small ground. Uh, and all Leeds fans are not used to all these grounds we're going to, and there's certainly players here or not. So. We, we got our, what we deserved on the day, which was nothing really. And the day we got beat down there, and that set the stall out um, for the rest of the season. Really, we struggling with teams at the bottom of the league, and then um, I think we got one of the biggest crowds at the the, 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 the cup competitions ever had, in it 30,000 against Huddersfield. So it was it was a bit of a tip month, but that the first month that that happens, um, and thrown in that I had to go back to my old club balls and my second away game, and Sully pulled off uh, one of his penalty saves. That I think he said eight or nine this year as well. So. It was a hectic first month. Um, I think we picked up four or five points in the first five, six games. Started off so well, but um, it was the, the Gillingham game, really. That was the, the start of things, really. Before league action resumed, more additions were made to the squad as Kevin Blackwell swooped for former Preston and West Brom talisman Sean Gregan. He got involved and through no fault of his own in a contract dispute between Gary Megson and Jeremy Peace, the chairman and manager of West Brom. And that left Sean short of fitness when he came here. And I remember the first day he came in and I said, look, you're playing in central midfield, but I want you to look after Simon Walton, uh, Danny Pugh and Fraser Richardson, who aren't midfield players, but, you know, try and help them through. Well, I, you know, I put so much pressure on him that, you know, it, it backfired. And, and Sean, to be fair, struggled. One, he needed to find his fitness. Two, he, needed, he was at a brand new club and knew nobody. And three, you know, the fans uh, demanded that he, he perform at the highest level straight away. But slowly, Sean turned round, and my decision to bring him in was correct. We became a lot more stronger in midfield, and uh, to go on then and have a real good run of results. You know, I'd been a captain at other clubs. I've played, you know, on 500 games now, and uh, obviously the season last season, uh, I won promotion to the Premiership. So uh, I like to think I know this division, and. Uh, I think obviously we had a lot of young players and he needed some experience and, and all the heads around so uh, like I said I was delighted to come and, and come and come and join. And days later Simon Walton, another graduate from the Leeds United Academy, signed professional forms to cap off an impressive start to the season for the youngster. Simon had basically walked in the building as a, a 16 year old, uh, centre half coming out of the academy, finding himself now in the first team and sure enough uh, we then had three out of four players alongside Jermaine Wright in midfield who weren't midfield players. But such was the nature of the of the situation at the club. That's how we started. It's everybody's dream to become a professional footballer, and I was just really proud and obviously pleased that I'd achieved that dream. And obviously signing professional terms and moving on, it meant that I had my chance to prove myself. September saw the visit of Coventry and former Leeds boss Peter Reid, but he'd leave empty-handed as Leeds embarked on a four-match unbeaten run. Coventry trying to push forward. The shot will come in here. Oh my goodness! What a ferocious shot it was too. 
Wright with the free kick. That was Clark Carlisle. It's a terrific looping header from the big man. It's his first goal for United. Jermaine Wright floats it in wonderfully towards the big men and it's Carlisle with a wonderfully placed header. Here's Richardson trying to get there. Good strength from Richardson. And it's not a bad ball in. Looking for Dean. Dean had Pew beyond him. Now Pew will get his chance. In comes the cross. That's Jermaine Wright and that's Chewichim. And he has finally got his goal for Leeds. Huge relief, I'm sure, for Chewichim. And it's 2-0 to United over Coventry. So many chances, Julian Joachim, in the early part of the season. Now the ball goes in. Simple finish. And Pugh trying to get away, and Kerry's brought him down. From the look on Kerry's face, he's heading for an early bath. Coventry's afternoon getting that bit worse, the challenge from Kerry, and he's off. Here come United once again. Richardson was trying to make it his. That's Jermaine Wright with his shot. Oh, he spilled, and Danny Pugh is there. It's three, and Pugh on target once again for United. Final minute of the game, it's the icing on the cake for Leeds. Howl up in the keeper, but Pew doesn't care, it's 3 0. I was delighted uh, to get into the team, and uh, when I got my chance, I tried to take it with, uh, with both hands, and uh, I, I, I thought I did, you know, I'm very happy with this first season. You like to get on the score sheet, you know, and, and help out when you can, but really, if You've got to concentrate on your job, you know, you're, you're paid to defend and keep clean sheets. Uh, I'd much rather keep a clean sheet than score a goal. So Danny Pugh then with his corner for United. Just before half-time, good time to score it would be. Chance for Walton there. Joachim, him and it's away. Butler will nod it back in. Oh, it's gone in! It's gone in! The defensive header sent the ball crashing in. And United have the lead. This is Craney. Dean has worked so hard in this first period at being the target man, but offering his services with the feet this time. Joe Chimp to Jermaine Wright, who hits the inside of the post. Fraser Richardson is denied by Stephen Foster on the line. How did Leeds not score there? Here's Kenny around the back for Stephen Jones. His second one will come again back to Kenny Lunt. His ball in now looks for Walker. It's there for Dean Ashton, a hand, and it is given. Penalty kick for Kroon. A handball from Clark Carlisle in front of Dean Ashton. What a start to the second half. Leeds United's first ever visit to Kroon. And Dean Ashton could give the Alex the lead. They've been beaten at Arsenal and Stamford Bridge, and now maybe Gristy Road. Because Kroon have the lead here at the start of the second period. Craney, lots of space for the Scottish international. Jermaine Wright, off him is Gregan. Dean is in the centre, and there's Joachim against the bar, and then it's in, knocked over the line by Danny Pugh, and leads a level within two minutes of conceding. The game is up for grabs. Jonah with Clark Carlisle. Kenny's in support in the centre. Also, there is JC, and he has the ball right now. The final third needs some quality. Can Kenny provide it? He's onside. Jones is in support. Can he finish? He can! Steve Jones has beaten Leeds United. The former Premiership side have come a cropper against the David of the division. Savell gives it up to McMaster once more, but there's Higdon. And he is playing more in midfield, isn't he? But they've lost out to Jermaine Rice on the far side. It's here with Danny Pugh. He's got them level once more. Leeds have been saved defeat here at the Alexandra Stadium. The improved form in September had made happier reading of the tables, with Leeds up into the top half in 10. Sullivan clears up towards Joachim. 
He's always going to struggle in the air there, Julian Jurchin. Kelly goes in. Referee says no foul and Kelly can go on. And that's not a bad looking pass. Michael Ricketts. Ricketts can score for Leeds. And he has. It's the perfect start for United. Just nine minutes in, Ricketts has scored his first goal for Leeds. So much of it down to Kelly. The initial tackle and then a wonderful floated pass. Ricketts' first touch was good. And the finish was spot on. Here's Kelly again. He's always already created one. Can he create a second? Oh, it was close and Ricketts couldn't quite get the rebound. Carlisle, Ormrod, Dean are all in there. It swung in towards Dean. No. The referee says foul and it will not stand from Brian Dean. Dean looked to head the ball cleanly into the goal. Well, the referee is this week's winner of the spot the foul competition. Sunderland free kick, which Robinson has taken quickly and he's gone for the return. Robinson! It's 1-0 to Sunderland. And Carl Robinson caught Leeds napping with a quick free kick. United corner to be swung in. Bodies went tumbling. Referee says penalty. And it's Clark Carlisle who's been manhandled by Stephen Caldwell. Referee has no doubts at all. Bear hug, he seems to say. And there it is. Ormrod on his debut to equalise. No! And it's cleared. And Brett Ormrod couldn't take the golden chance. And so the month drew to a close against Stoke, who, like many others, came to Elland Road and walked away with what they came for, a solitary point. Start of the month, we had um, one of the old managers come back, Reader, so we knew that his team were built for it. Um, and I think it was Julie Jorchum's first goal, won it for the club as well, after I think it was seven or eight games, so it was pleasing for him. Won the game 3 0, and it was a difficult game actually. I don't know if 3 0 scoreline flattered us a bit, it was, I think it was a very tight game, 1 0. Did they have a player sent off? I think they had a player sent off, which changed it. We got two late goals to make it look 3 0. It was a tough game, um, glad to get the win and it kicked us on that month a bit. Um, we went away again then to Plymouth and I got the controversial goal. That would win the game, I didn't care who got it as long as we won the game. And it was our first away win really, which, which people were talking about. Well, they've lost at Gillingham and they haven't won at Wolves and this stuff, so you've got to get this first away win as, as quick as you can. Um, and then it come our first home defeat of the season on a Friday night sky again. Um, against one of my old clubs, which is not nice, so Sunderland beat us 1 0 and probably deserved to beat us 1 0 on the night. Obviously, the first half, Brian Dean had a goal disallowed, which to this day I don't know why it was disallowed, no one ever knew that, but that's gone and they, they kicked on second half and it's shown what they are now, they'll go up as champions now, Sunderland. So, it was started off well but finished bad for me on a personal note. Cardiff look to build from the back once again in this first half. Here's McEnough on the ball. Ball played over the top towards Thorne. Thorne lays into the path of McEnough, driving at the box. Crady's brought him down. Penalty. Andy Campbell against Sullivan. Sullivan saves it. And he can't get the rebound. Neil Sullivan once again to Leeds rescue. I don't think there's any getting away from the fact that this has been a poor game here at Ellen Road this afternoon. Ormod will keep on trying though, despite that fact. And he's done well to get away from Alexander. Ormod into the box and Ormod still. Here's Danny Pugh. He's scored again. Danny Pugh with Leeds' first goal in almost four matches. It's his sixth of the season. Preston should have cleared, but Pugh has done it again. Leeds. Try and get some early pressure on the Reading goal in this opening couple of minutes at the Medeski Stadium. Poor touch from Ormrod, but he gets it back from Ricketts. Here's Ormrod, deflected cross, but there's Walton! And Simon Walton has scored his first 
Senior goal for Leeds United at the tender age of 17. What a moment for the youngster. Shorey with his free kick for Reading. In towards Kitson. Sullivan saves it. But there's a Wusu to bundle home the equaliser in the dying minutes of the first half. Obviously it was a special feeling and it was again, they were flying at the time and really it was unlucky to come away with a draw. I'd been happy if it had been a winning goal, but still it's always in your mind your first professional goal. Back to the action and a first ever visit to the With Dean Stadium. It was definitely forgettable as the club nosedived to the end of the month with three defeats in a row. Diamante camera, Jurchim trying to get back. This is Fuller, Fuller turning. Oh, and camera snuck between two. Diamante camera, that's given Pompey the lead. Walton couldn't quite get it off the line. Taylor, and now Berkovic pulling the strings in the Pompey midfield. This is Mazag. Carlisle got a foot in. Mazag into the penalty box, he's gone down, and Stu Bennett says penalty to Pompey. Brukovic to make it 2-0 to Portsmouth at Fratton Park, and he's done so. And United are in real trouble, 2-0 down. Needing a goal before half-time, United really, that's Kelly's cross, Brian Dean! Terrific header from Brian Dean. Trademark Dean goal, he gets in front of his marker, it's a wicked ball in from Gary Kelly. But Dean with a terrific goal, it's his first goal back for Leeds United. Uh, everybody was looking at Leeds, uh, I think people rubbing their hands saying, well yeah we were proved right, Leeds would struggle. Um, but quietly the players were getting a lot of experience under their belt, the youngsters, and uh, Simon Walton I thought was doing a particularly good job. Um, but those first two or three months were uh, and did prove to be very, very difficult. Well, this place pass might give Gregan the chance to counter for United. He's got Dean to his left and this is David Healy. Healy on his first game for the club and he just couldn't keep it down. Wigan pressing right at the start of the second half. That's a lovely turn from Roberts. Here's Mann! Well, he hit that tremendously well. And Wigan lead by a goal to nil. Dean, good strength from the big man. Healy's to his left. Here's David Healy. Phelan saves. The rebound is there. But United can't follow it up. In floats the corner. Dean has always the target. But Wigan through Bullard will clear. And this is Roberts battling away so strong. And on goes Roberts, Bullard has continued his run, and this is Jimmy Bullard. Ellington's in the centre, Bullard still, and he'll score. Wonderful goal from Jimmy Bullard. And Wigan 2 0 up on United. No one ever said that life in the Championship was going to be easy. Wigan, top of the league. So October drew to a close and a month of mixed fortunes ended with a most notable high, with former Manchester United and Preston hitman David Healy making his much-awaited move to Elland Road. David Healy came in and was you know, a revelation straight away. First game, two goals and, and went on a scoring run there. And uh, David is an intelligent player and, and what you know, I basically had to say to the board that you know, we couldn't keep going along the route that we were going along and we needed to try and bring in two or three players who who I felt could make the difficult difference and, and what was that difference? That we didn't get relegated. For me to, you know, have the opportunity to come and train here and play here, you know, that was a main attraction. Plus the fact that it's Leeds United, you know, they've they've been there before and they've done it and you know the chance for me to come and try and do it again, you know, that was the main draw. <laughs> Start of the month, one of the club, one of the games that the fans are looking forward to. I think with Cardiff, what's got an history down at this club and the Cardiff fans, and it was it was a daunting game to go into because the Cardiff fans were up for it. I think they was averaging eleven or twelve thousand um, at home, and suddenly there was eighteen and a half thousand turned up for that game. Massive police presence. Um, our fans were absolutely brilliant. I'd been since the start of the season away from home, filled every away game. 
and they, they were they were tremendous in there. They were getting so much stick off the Cardiff fans, and they were stuck at it. And Sully again pulled out a penalty save, um, and we, we we got a nil-nil draw, which I thought we deserved. And who was the other game? Preston at home, wasn't it? And there was a lot of talk before that game about Dave Ely coming, a good mate of mine, and they actually hadn't played up to that game, and actually they actually threw him in in the game uh, against Preston against us. We beat him one 0 Dave got took off for Preston, and he got a standing ovation. So I've never seen that before. And then um, we went away to uh, Reading, was it? And Simon Moulton scored his first goal, was it, uh, in the first minute? And uh, we thought we could have won gone because we played really well that night. And then on a, on a downside, we lost three on the trot, which is we had to bounce back from that. Uh, but more disappointing was our disciplinary record, really, because we had two players sent off, and the squad that we had, we couldn't really have players getting sent off. November would be a roller coaster from the brilliant to the downright frustrating. And it would start with frustration, but peak with brilliance against Queen's Park Rangers. Well, United really need to get back to winning ways this evening. Two defeats against a Burnley side that's had its problems. Here's Healy, here's Jermaine Wright! Oh. 15 seconds on the watch, and Leeds have got the lead! Well, how many supporters will have missed that goal? Jermaine Wright, 1-0. Regan's header back, Carlisle has plenty of time. Roach is threatening, no, oh my goodness, and Sullivan's lost it to him. What a terrible moment for the Leeds back four, and it's 1-1. Long ball by Sinclair. O'Connor is coming in. It was a good save by Sullivan. But Duffy has scored for Burnley. What a turnaround in this game. United pressing for an equalising goal. That's Gregan heading it forward. Jurchim! Oh my goodness! How has it stayed out? It hit post and it hit crossbar from Julian Jurchim. With United's corner then here at Deepdale. Float it in, and Dean is there to give Leeds the lead after just 13 minutes of the game. A simple header for the big man. The goalkeeper looked as if he was going to make it, but it's 1-0. Clark Carlisle has moved forward for this one. Dean's in the centre also. So Carlisle might get a second chance. Oh, Healy! It's his first goal for United against this former club. It had to be Healy today. And when North End failed to clear this free kick, it ricochets straight to David Healy. Regan finds Jermaine Wright, and that's a lovely floated pass, and he's in again. It could be three here, but when he's trying to tackle, but he couldn't get there. And that's what it means to David Healy. 3 0 to United. On the stroke of half time, you thought the lob might have been on, but he bought the tackle. It's a cool finish. The two who's ball forward, that's a lovely layoff, and this is Cresswell. And it's a goal back for Preston. 3 1 the score now. Here's Oster. That was beautifully done. So easily away from McKenna. Dean is at the back post. Brian Dean. Oh, the easiest of goals. Simon Walton will never get an easier chance. And it's 4-1 at Deepdale. A terrific display. Dixon Etuhu for Preston. That's Cresswell again. And that's a lovely header from Richard Cresswell. Two goals for the Yorkshireman. 4-2 is the score to Leeds. It was nice to go back, you know, I think when people sort of leave the club it's sort of a bit longer before they go back and play the, the club but for me it was only like a week, ten days so uh, it gave the it gave the press and fans and the people there the, the chance to give me a little bit of stick, which it did on the day but it sort of makes you more determined to you know, go and do well and score goals. Ipswich having plenty of possession this second half and this is Kevin Horlock. It's a good looking pass and Bowditch was almost between defenders. Kuchi, a good save and bent. It's going to have to be a goal. Can Sullivan keep it out? It's 1-0 to Ipswich Town. 
And Darren Bent is the scorer. Following the unfortunate defeat to Ipswich, the team bounced straight back against QPR in the game of the season at Elland Road. Gallon and now Ainsworth. Ainsworth has done well to get away from Pugh. And that's a terrific goal by Gareth Ainsworth. Inside two minutes, QPR have the lead. Half headed away, but that was Jermaine Wright poking it forwards. And a comfortable save by Chris Gale. And that was Healy! What a goal by David Healy! A real touch of class from the basket. First time on the half volley. Exquisite. Hooked in by Walton. But QPR getting it away to Kelly. Here's Walton again. Oh, it's a lovely back heel. Jermaine Wright, what can he do? Dean! It's 2 1 United. And we've only been playing for 13 minutes. A lovely move, appreciated by the crowd. And created really by Simon Walton. There's the back heel. It's beautifully done. And Wright's ball is perfect for Brian Dean. The big man at the back post can hardly miss. <laughs> Kevin Blackwell <laughs> watches on. And he enjoyed seeing that. 2-1. Butler's ball, Dean heads on, that was Santos, so he's made a terrible hash of that, and it's going to be three. Jermaine Wright with the third goal for United, midway through the first half. It's a defensive error by QPR, Santos's header goes nowhere, and Jermaine Wright gratefully accepts. Well, what a start to this game we've had, QPR in front early on, but now... United a 3-1 up. Santos won't enjoy watching that. Jermaine Wright will. Here's Oster on the attack. There's a nice run there into the box by Jermaine Wright. And Dean again. It's 4-1. The same combination. Jermaine Wright's cross. And Brian Dean with a simple finish at the back post. Oster's pass is wonderfully disguised. And QPR can't defend it. Brian Dean slides in to get his second of the game. No look pass from Oster. It's 4 1. This crowd baying for a sixth goal. Healy onto Walton. Walton goes down. Oh, the referee says penalty. Penalty to United. And a shot at the sixth goal. <laughs> the referee visibly wincing there at the language from Marcus Bean. Bean doesn't think it's a foul. Minimal contact, perhaps. But Healy with a chance to make it six for United. No! It's saved by Chris Day. And Healy kept out it's just slightly too near the goalkeeper who makes a really good save now here come United looking for that sixth goal oh Dean it's in there it's number six for United it's number four for Brian Dean <laughs> well he won't have had many days as good as this one 6-1 to United it's Jermaine right again with a cross. It's Danny Shitu with a defensive header that sets up Brian Dean very nicely indeed. Thank you very much. Shitu's up first, but he can't deal with it. Brian Dean certainly can. 6 1 to United, and they were one behind in this one. Four for Brian Dean. Strange game, really, because. Uh... I think we went 1-0 down, you know, I think Ainsworth scored early on, but uh, I think we were dominated, dominating the game up until then and they broke away and scored a goal, but I think the lads were always confident that we could get back into the game and as I say, I scored the first goal, but I think they'll, they'll always be remembered for uh, obviously Dino scoring four goals. To give him a performance like that at home, he's got six goals and 
the, you know, the local legend, Nachim Four. So, and uh, Dave Ely scored a fluky goal, I think. I remember in that game as well. So. And Watford lead, and Dyer is claiming it. It may have gone off Clark Carlisle. Butler's long ball, always looking to try and pick out Brian Dean. And a tremendous goal from Jermaine Wright for United. Wright accepts the congratulations. It was Dean's layoff that made it. Oster was also in there looking to pick the pieces up. But look at that. Clean as a whistle from Jermaine Wright. Danny Pugh's corner. Butler attacked it. That's Griggan. Comfortable in the end for the goalkeeper. Here's Walton for Leeds. That's a lovely floated pass. And a fine save from the goalkeeper. United pressing for a 2-1 advantage in the early part of this second half. It's a good flying save. Oh, Gregan will turn into trouble. And this is Bruce Dyer. And it's 2-1 to Watford. What a mess from the United defence. Last five minutes, United throwing everybody forward. This is Jermaine Wright into the near post. Joachim was close. Joachim might get a second chance. Did well to hold it up. Wright. That's Clark Carlisle. <laughs> Tremendous header from Clark Carlisle. No wonder he's enjoying it. It might well be worth a point. 2-2. Two -two. Rotherham are coming on a bit strong. The piece situation McLaren takes and Barker's back heel and it's been forced in by Martin McIntosh. So that was November, perfectly summed up by the frustration felt at Millmore, one certainly not to remember. Yeah, so um, we started off again the, the month and uh, had another defeat at home against Burnley. Which at the time we knew Burnley weren't giving much away, uh, but it was very disappointing. We played poor that night. It was one of our worst performances of the season. Uh, we got beat 2 0, and rightly so. And then we had to bounce back, and uh, we went away to Preston. I think that's the first game they got to change the system then, away to Preston, because we'd lost three out of four league games or something. And he, he wanted to keep things tight, and we went away playing a 4 5 1 come 4 3 3 system away to Preston. And uh, Dave scored two goals against them, Dave Ealer, which really kicked us on. Um, because after that, we, we banged six past uh, QPR at home, with Brian getting four of them, Brian Dean, which is a great two games. And then um, we had West uh, Watford, we had to come back twice from that, I think, Clark Kyle, last minute, scored an equalising goal for us. And then to top it all off, we was on Sky again against Rotherham. Haven't won a league game all season. Big banana skin, we was going there Friday night, everyone was saying, no, you won't get beat, you've got no chance, they're rubbish, this, that and the other. And what happens, we get beat. Um, dominated the game, but same old story again. We didn't convert our chances and let a sloppy goal in. It just summed up the start of the season up till up, up till now with getting beat off and, and losing games and dropping points against teams at the bottom of the league, which we'd done from the start of the season really. Into December and although the month would start disappointingly, it certainly ended well. Is Oster for United. He's seen the run of David Healy. It's a good save from Ian Walker, United perhaps should be in front. Scowcroft was in there for Leicester, couldn't get the head to it. That was Connolly, good save by Sullivan. Back in it comes, and Scowcroft, and a brave header in there, gets the ball clear for United. Doubling the target again, Dublin still battering. United trying to clear as a shout for handball. But the goal will stand, and it's Lillian Nallis. Here's Oster for United, lovely dummy. On he goes, John Oster. Terrific save by Walker to deny John Oster again. Now Lennon, he's scampering away, they can't deal with him. Aaron Lennon, Dean's pulled away. It's over the top from Brian Dean. What a chance for 1-1. Gillespie for Leicester City. Oh, it's come off Gary Kelly. It's a flying header by Kelly. 
into his own net and the points are going to Leicester. Here's Jermaine Wright. United trying to find a way back into this game. David Healy perhaps, it might go in. It's hacked to safety on the goal line and it just will not go in for United today. My Wolf take the free kick then for West Ham as we still search for the opening goal. Terrific atmosphere at Upton Park. Here's Fletcher for West Ham, just opening up slightly for him. Etherington joining in, it's not a bad looking cross. Harewood was close, it's in! And Luke Chadwick has given West Ham the lead. Cross is whipped in. There's a strong appeal there for handball. The referee has turned away immediately. But the protest goes on. Mike Pike said that from Darren Powell was not a handball. The replay suggests otherwise. Healy into the box. He's got down and a penalty. A penalty for United in the 90th minute of the game. This time Mike Pike does point to the spot. I think justice in the end. As Healy went down under the challenge from Lomas. Goalkeeper's trying to put Healy off here. Crucial point at stake for United if David Healy can score this. And he can. And it's 1-1. Calmly taken by David Healy right in the corner. And that's not a bad flick on from Dean. Dean again trying to find a way through. Well, that looked painful. His right, and now Healy. And it's opening up here for David Healy. Oster now, shooting chance. John Oster for Leeds. It's there. Opening goal of the game to John Oster. Terrific play from Healy in the build-up. And it's 1-0 to United. That is an enormous throw from Seriu. And Ward got a flick on. And penalty. Eiffel it was who went down in the challenge. And referee Tony Leake says spot kick to Millwall. Jody Morris with a chance to equalise and he takes it. And Morris is beside himself, it's 1-1. The Boxing Day fixture saw Leeds travel to the Stadium of Light where Blackwell's boys toppled the Black Cats and Aaron Lennon made a goal-scoring return to first-team action. Here's Healy on the burst. This is Lennon, it's opened up. And that's a terrific goal by Aaron Lennon. After half an hour, Leeds take the lead. It was direct, but very effective. Here's Lawrence. This is Whitehead for Sunderland. Spring got close and the referee says penalty. Lawrence will take. And it's 1-1. Here's Spring. Galloping down the left-hand side. Spring goes on. Robinson... Seemed to go in too quickly for the ball and Spring continues. Held up by Breen. This is Healy. Enticing ball. Oh! And a tremendous header from Brian Dean. It's the perfect cross from Healy. 2 1. Now, a third goal would surely seal it. This is Jermaine Wright. Joachim! Three points for United and a wonderful victory at the Stadium of Light. Crisp finish from Georgian. It'll be Arca to take and a wonderful free kick from Julio Arca. They're racing to get the ball but surely only a consolation. I got injured in pre-season just before I liked the pre-season games but really it killed me really. 
I was out for about six weeks with my Achilles. So, and then the team started off to playing quite well. So really, I just had to be patient, really, and wait to get my chance. And I knew I had to play well, really. If I didn't, then the gaffer may change things. So I tried to play as well as I could. And it's gone from there, really. Out to Richardson it goes. That was lovely from Richardson to get inside his man. Still Fraser Richardson. Pew, nicely on to Healy. This is promising. Healy's ball in. Oh, he's turned in. An own goal gives Leeds the lead. And it's Gilbert, I think, at the back post who's put it in. Healy spots the keeper off his line. That was a wonderful goal from David Healy. He really is a touch of class. And that was perfect. Surely Plymouth can't get one back. Well, they can. So 2004 closed with victory over the Pilgrims. It had been a turbulent 12 months for the club, but the ship had been steadied and signs of progress were there to be seen. I did predict early in the season to, to, to the papers and everybody else in August that I felt the second half of the season would see a lot more uh, cohesion within our play and, and more consistent results and really what I was looking for from the first half of the season was a performance that I felt would then get us results later on and I could see it coming but it was just taking time. So we go into December and uh, we play in Leicester, two premiership clubs and um, no one really could afford to lose it. They was you know, the bottom of the league, we were not that far off but we were coming into it with, with decent form, really beating QPR 6 and beating Preston 4 the previous month. Confident going into it, we, got, we let ourselves down again 2-0. Um, disappointing, uh, I think Gary scored an own goal, he was down at half-time and they come out the stronger team, deserved to win it. And then it kicked us on then, uh, we went away to West Ham, a fighting performance yet again on Sky, um, it was another Sky game for us. Um, they went 1-0 up, we had 2-3 or three penalties that we didn't get. And then in the dying minutes, Dave got a penalty and we took it away. And that really kick-started us from, kicked us on from December to where we are now, really, because the form we've had from the West Ham game has been encouraging. Because after that, we went away to Millwall and got a deserved point at Millwall. And then over the Christmas period, we have two games in three days. We picked up maximum points. We're beating Sunderland 3 2 away, which is probably the performance of the season. And then beating Plymouth at home. So. That really kicked us on and put us, put us in a strong position come New Year. But the New Year didn't bring a change of fortune on the pitch as consistency remained elusive. But away from the playing field, things were looking a little brighter with a takeover bid looming in the pipeline. This is Richardson. Did well, Richardson. And he's found Healy and that's not a bad ball in. And Nathan Blake was the man at the near post who got close to turning that in. Crew corner. Oh, it's turned in. It's turned in by Dean Ashton. He's done it again against United. Kenny Lunt will take this free kick for Crew. He's taken it pretty well, and Sullivan did okay, but it's in again. And Mark Rivers has given Crew a 2 0 lead. Well, Leeds really struggling in these conditions and, and Butler's got a turn here and he's pulled his man down and he knows what's coming. It's a red card for Butler and an awful start to the new year for Leeds. And Carlisle making a run towards it but just seemed to have his run checked by the defender. We'll get a second try now. Maybe Blake will have a go and that's a terrific goal. Nathan Blake for Leeds. Carlisle is brave with the challenge and no messing from Nathan Blake. Terrific finish. Well cleared away by United. And it's Blake again, he's just going to hold the ball up, he's done well. There are possibilities here, this is Jermaine Wright. Switching play to Healy. Healy has everything to his right, he might go himself. Terrific goal by David Healy. And United well on track for their third win in four games. He does have options here, David Healy. 
The defender's looking round, but he's so decisive. And it's 2-0 to United. Carlisle, well, just now handling Stern John there. And despite his protestations, a yellow card. Commentary corner. Swung in towards Stern John. That's McSheffrey. 2 1. And there are only eight minutes remaining. Needs have got the ball in the right area of the field, but Coventry trying to squeeze it away. That's John. And was he tripped by Clark Carlisle? The assistant referee is flagging. He might be in trouble here, Clark Carlisle. The, the protests are loud. Oh dear. This will be a red card for Clark Carlisle. Six minutes left. Leeds might have to hold on here. Birmingham will launch another ball up towards Emil Heskey. Heskey's touch lets him down, but it falls kindly to Anderton. Morrison plays a lovely ball through to Heskey. Sullivan's out, but Heskey's there first. And Birmingham have won the up at St Andrews. Carter clears for Birmingham. Here's Jubilee though, brings it forward. Challenged by Carter. Jubilee's down, but Birmingham play on. Eski into Morrison. Morrison quickly round to Carter. And Carter makes it two. But the Leeds players are furious. And a challenge on Jubri from Carter. But he won't mind though. Morrison breaking now for Birmingham. With real purpose down this right hand side. There's Carter inside. Carter for 3 0. His second of the game, Birmingham's third, and Leeds are heading out of the FA Cup. This is Walton for a second time, he might get it for a third, Walton in there, terrific goal! Lovely interplay by Lennon, Walton, Healy and then Walton again to give Leeds the lead. Splendid goal! McEnough's ball into the box and Langley beat Sullivan to it and penalty. He took his while in giving it the referee but a chance for Cardiff to equalise. Peter Thorne from the spot against Neil Sullivan and it was cool as you like from Thorne and it's Leeds 1, Cardiff 1 and Thorne took the penalty so well. On the 21st of January 2005, the news we'd all been waiting for finally arrived. The proposed takeover headed by Ken Bates had been successful and the future of Leeds United now had a much brighter complexion about it, with a huge weight of financial insecurity lifted from the club's shoulders. On the 3rd of the 20th, when we were finalising, there was uh, a winding up order on the club from the Inland Revenue because they'd been promised £1.1 million in December off the arrears, which they hadn't had. And they said, OK, we had enough. Now, administration and, and the receivership is one thing. But you know, the high quarter with a back winding up order, which the judge would grant because there's no reason why they shouldn't, then the club's finished. And then there wouldn't have been any more leads because you don't sort of come back from that. And then uh, you go out of the league. So that would be the end of it. There's always a risk, of course. There's some risking money now. Um, but it's a challenge. And I think that uh, I did it once before at Chelsea. The problems there are very different than they are here. Um, but I think we can get it. We're, we're slowly turning it around. And one good thing we've got is a great bunch of staff in the office because at the end of the day, you know, the fans just look at the first team, and quite rightly so. But if it's like an iceberg, and all you see, the fans see, is the tip at the top. But all the little lot of work and, and people working away behind the scenes you never know about, but without whom you wouldn't have a club or indeed any other business. Uh, if you look at the most, three most successful clubs in the country over the last 20 years, well, four including Chelsea, three Abramovich, um, Liverpool, Manchester United, Arsenal and Chelsea, they're all run as proper businesses. 
There's no big hand-ins or you know, subsidies. No rich man's plaything. And they built their stadium and their team on the income that came to the football club. And that's what we must do at Leeds. So we must never, ever again have the trauma of the last few years. <coughs> no, there was a great deal of speculation and when I came in who I was going to bring in as manager, including Dennis Wise, um, but that was one of many. But my point was that Kevin had done such a good job here um, with nothing or very little that it was the only right to give him an opportunity of give him a, an extended chance on a level playing field. After all, if you demand loyalty, you've got to give it. It got to a point where we, every day we were being mentioned once again about going bust and whatever, uh, the sale of Thorpe Parks, the sale of Ellen Road, this, that, and all, they were all you know, factors that didn't help the situation. We had struggled to pay the wages in Christmas and we'd already been given an email to say that certain people wouldn't be paid in January, so there was a major pressure on everybody. More myself because I knew what was going on and I'd try to keep it from the players as much as I could. And then uh, the chairman came in and he took it over and straight away there was a massive weight lifted from everybody that for the first time the club was safe because I believe on the Monday it was a, it was a, a liquidation order and not a wind, uh, not administration because effectively we'd already done the administration, we'd sold everybody and everything. And um, my understanding that I found out you know, maybe six weeks later that in actual fact if the chairman hadn't come in when he had to come in we were in deep, deep trouble on the Monday and it could well have seen us fold as a football club. So uh, they do say it's all about timing. So his timing was perfect. Uh, and then it gave us that lift when we needed it. And I think it, once again, that showed again in, the, in the, another surge of quality prof you know, uh, results that we got from there on in. And the new era got off to the best possible start with a valuable away win at Stoke, although rather fortunately, as the host's fullback Wayne Thomas netted past his own keeper deep into the second half. And Smith's done well to help it on. The counter attack might be on here. Jurchin seemed to pull up there for United, but Smith goes on, and there's real danger here. And Tommy Smith has given Derby County the lead. He wanted all day, Tommy Smith, but he took it well. Derby heading clear, Bregan went in, but could only kick it against Raziak, and there are runners all over the place here for United, and the deflection, and it's 2-0. And Adam Boulder has given Derby the win. With the visit of Brighton, it was time for the Elland Road faithful to welcome Ken Bates to the club, with optimism high at the dawn of a new era at Elland Road. Fantastic, absolutely fantastic signing. Another bloke who can speak his mind. Nobody calls him, he's on the phone to Sky. He'll do great things for Leeds. I mean, a lot of people called him at Chelsea. I mean, called him because he's come from Chelsea. Look what he did for Chelsea. Absolutely superb. Needs a look here together. Very look here. He bought Chelsea for a pound and sold it for millions and millions and millions. So if he can leave. Ellen Road in the same set as he left Chelsea and I'll be very happy. If the man's willing to put money, his own money in to keep this club afloat so we can get back to where we should be, I've, I've got no grievance with the man. I know he's a Chelsea man, but he weren't Chelsea when he went there. And let's, let, let's hope we can adopt him as being a Yorkshireman. Not, not everybody's best friend, I'm sure, and he's upset a lot of people along his ways, but at the end of the day, I'd rather him come in than somebody who didn't really give two monkeys about Leeds United. Uh, if he's willing to put his hands in his pockets and pay for Leeds, then as far as I'm concerned, he's, he's the man for me. Um, and he'll sort out what's going on in the background here. And uh, that's, that's got to be good news for the Leeds fans, and it's certainly good news for me as a season ticket holder. Healy with the corner. Ines might have been the target. It's come through to Clark Carlisle. Maybe he'll get a second bite, the big man. Oh, he scored! <laughs> Carlisle puts... Leeds in front. I think it was deflected in, but it matters not. Carpenter's corner for the Seagulls. United still have some defending to do here, and it's in. Equaliser by Guy Butters with just nine minutes remaining. Emotional moment for Eric Backer. Nine months after his last United appearance, Backer is back.
Not only had the month of January brought renewed life, but the form was enough to keep Leeds in contention at the top half of the table. We'll start off here with New Year's Day. We've got crew at home. We just finished off um, getting maximum points over Christmas, uh, picking six out of six, and we fancied our chances against crew at home. A good game for us to, to push on into the, the top ten. Um, another one of these teams that are at the bottom of the league and they took maximum points off us another day where I got sent off as well, two yellow cards. I let the side down again. Um, that's two sending offs I've had and I've only ever sent off three times in my career, twice at, for Leeds now, so it wasn't promising. And then we went away to Coventry, we needed to win. And the lads put a great performance in, Nathan Blake scored his goal, um, took it well and we won 2-1. Unlucky to, not to keep another clean sheet, they scored near the end, but the win was most important and then we had uh, Birmingham away in the cup a couple of days afterwards. Put a good performance up with the team that we put out because we put a young team out that day. Michael Dubry uh, got injured after 5-10 minutes so we had to reshuffle, put Sean Gregan back there, Nathan Blake went after 10-15 minutes so and the lads put a really good performance on against a strong Birmingham team at the time. I think they'd won 6 out of 7 Birmingham going into that so they were unlucky the scoreline didn't reflect the game, it was never a free now. Um, and then from then on, I think it was it uh, Stoke. We played Stoke, and uh, a couple of days prior to that it was Mr. Bates' takeover. So the lads were really, really up for it because it was an injection and a lifeline for us. Because a week prior to that, we thought the, we were going to get ten points deducted. That's how serious it was coming at the club. And Mr. Bates come in and he took over the club, and it was a great boost for the lads. And we rewarded him really with uh, a great win because they were talking the paper as soon as he took over about the manager, uh, what's going to happen. And, in a way, like Joe, that it was, it was a great victory for the, for the players and for the manager as well because he was under severe pressure that day in the papers and everything the Sky Tellies was, was, was running it that he was going to lose his job and this and which was totally rubbish like in the day because the players were fully behind him. February witnessed another busy period for Kevin Blackwell in the transfer market as he sought to add to his ever-strengthening squad. In came loan signings Michael Gray from Blackburn and Rob Hulse from West Bromwich Albion, whom were later in the month joined by the permanent signing of Sean Derry from Crystal Palace. Very important players and as I said, since the chairman's come in, I think we've played 14 games and we've, uh, we've lost three, drawn six, won five. Uh, we've become a very tough, tough team to beat. I think as we sit here now, we've only lost four in the last 25 games. And had it been this been the first half of the season, I think we'd have been third or fourth at the moment in a great position to strike for the second half of the season. So I just wish the season had started at Christmas. Um, but uh, those three that we talked about, Holtz, Gray and Derry have come in and have given us you know, good experience. That allowed me then to, to rest Fraser, um, Matthew Kilgallen and Simon Walton. Uh, and Danny Pugh, and, um, because I feel that we've, we've got to develop our own in the right manner and to exhaust them and kill them uh, mentally and physically uh, is not the way to develop players. Well, when he first came in for me before Christmas, he wanted me to perhaps come and give a little bit more experience to the cause, and um, although I didn't actually arrive until after Christmas, where the, um, where the hardest part of probably, we've, we've probably been through the hardest part early season and for, uh, over Christmas. Just that the club had been through a real turbulent time and, and they've been struggling. And then, um, you know, I think now's time. I could see now's time for the little turnaround and, and hopefully we can um, do, do something about it. So it's a good time to come to the club, really, you know, and um, get some football. And um, I knew a few of the lads here as well. So, you know, and they were telling me good things about the place and that things were eventually turning around. And, um, you know, I think, think we, we've set the club uh, on that that way now. There's a squad of players here now that um, should be uh, pushing for promotion next season. Um, there's a lot of ambition here. There's some youngsters here as well um, to gel along with the experienced players. And when the manager brings in some new players in the summer as well, we're going to have a great squad of players. And uh, there's, there's no question that we've got to be trying to finish um, in the top two of this division next season. So Leeds with his free kick. There's Dean, good save by Jensen. And it needed to be, that's a great header by Brian Dean. And Gas Jensen. It's never best to keep that one out. Great delivery by Jermaine Wright, right in the danger area. And there was Dean, good save.
leads. Come again through Lennon. Lennon against Kamara. And he wants to show him a clean pair of heels. Gets his cross in. And there's Ineson. And Ineson puts Leeds United one up at Turf Moor. Great delivery by Young. Lennon, here it is now. Wonderful speed to get past Kamara. He really put it on the plate for the Icelandic International. That's his first goal for the club. And only his second game. But you can't underestimate Lennon's part in this goal. Wonderful skill to get past Kamara. And leads a 1 0 up. to Moore. Carlisle's there, should clear for Leeds. No, he's waiting for the keeper. And Carlisle's brought down Moore. And right to the death, Burnley have a chance to get back in this game. Awful mistake by Clark Carlisle. Ian Moore against Neil Sullivan. Moore steps up, and Sullivan saves it. And Carlisle Gets it clear, and he'll thank his keeper for saving that one. It wasn't the best penalty, it has to be said. But Sullivan still had to save it. Good play by the big man. At the time, I, th I think it was a big game. I think they'd just played Liverpool in the FA Cup, and, and they'd done really well against them. And um, um, their towels were up, and they was on quite a good run. And uh, it was going to be a difficult place to go and go and play, and uh, we did well that day. We, we did well that day, and, and, and we felt we should have got the points there. Um, but like I say, we rode our luck a bit, and you know we got we got the, the points. Yeah, that was that was an important one because we just scored um, up there, and they came down within minutes and, and got the penalty, and and, and uh, that would have knocked the stuffing out of us, I think, if we had conceded then. And, and it would have it would have put us under pressure for the, for the remainder of the game. And like I say, lucky enough, we we, we managed to save it. Well, Reading making a pig's ear of that clearance, and here's Healy trying to get in between defenders. David Healy, what a terrific finish from David Healy. He enjoyed that one. A real solo effort from David Healy. He looks like he's going to be crowded out, but. Good strength from Healy, a terrific composure. The long ball is in search of Rob Hulse. Good first touch from Hulse, and here's Healy, and things might open up here for Leeds. Healy with a ball across to right, and this is Hulse trying to get space, and that's a terrific goal from Rob Hulse. What a signing this guy looks to be. 2-0 to Leeds United. And that was a clean strike from Hulse. Hulse and Healy combining well. And Hulse galloping clear. Rob Hulse for his second goal. What a strike from Hulse. 3-0 to United. And the signs of a real blossoming combination between Healy and Rob Hulse is 25 yards out and that's right in the corner. Last minute of the game, the points are surely safe as Reading push for something back. Regan's trying to get the ball away. Wright trying to get the tackle and that is a super goal by Lloyd Awusu at the near post for Reading. 3-1 now. Couldn't have had a better start, really. You know, it was a good, good debut for me, and um, especially being out for so long and not starting a game, and not f I don't think I'd finished the game for over a year um, through with my stomach and injuries and stuff like that. So it was just like a massively emotional day, and, and, and one that I'll remember forever. Following two successive victories, the trip to High Flying Wigan ended with defeat, with the promotion chasers completing the double over leads for the season. Lennon's going to take on Chris Powell here, not a bad ball in! Tremendous goal! It's Rob Hulse! 
Sitting up here for Williams. Well, that's the equaliser. What a piece. Healy's done really well. Oh, he can win it! Tremendous from Sean Derry. And it's 2-1 with just four minutes remaining. He needed so much good work, but Derry was so composed. One of the moments of the season so far. I was very um, proud and privileged to, to make a home debut in such a, such a memorable game, really, against a, a club of the stature of West Ham as well. I had a lot of family and um, friends up in, the, up in the stand watching me and obviously you know, culminating in the, in the goal at the end of it. The game was like filtering out, it was going to be another Leeds United draw and um, I think I played up to David Ely, he'd done his magic and put me through on goal and I was fortunate enough to be in the position where I finished it well it, and it, it, really, you know, it really made my day and not only my day but my family's day as well. So going into February now, and we looked on, on, on the programme and we've got four, four tough games, four, four teams that were all above us at the time. Um, Burnley away, um, very, very tough place to go to. And we sneak through, got 1-0, Gilfie's first goal for the club. Uh, and yet another Neil Sullivan save, penalty save towards the end of the game. You know, we took the points away, but we didn't. And then we played uh, Reading at home, another team that was, was going well in the top six. And Rob Hulse had, had joined us then, um, and on his debut, he couldn't have dreamt of a better debut. Uh, two great goals, which was my goals of the season, both of them, the way he took them. Uh, to say that he hadn't played for you know, four or five months prior to that, it just shows you how much of it is. It was a player that Agatha was chasing for the start of the season, Rob Hulse. And then we went away, and I've said on record that it was the only team this year that has really turned us over in that game. We lost 3-0 at Wigan. And we did get our backsides kicked that day, and it could have been a lot more. It could have been seven or eight, and that's not exaggerating. If it wasn't through Neil Sullivan, and that he's the only one that could come out of that any credit at all from that day, because they, they absolutely was men against boys. They absolutely tore us apart, and you know rightly so as well. And they, they were the first team to do a double over us this year as well, which was a bit disappointing. And then it was a big game against West Ham the week afterwards. We had to bounce back, um, and both teams were under different circumstances needed the points. We wanted to get to closer to West Ham and West Ham wanted to push him further to the playoffs. And we come out of that game and it was a, a great 2-1 win for us um, against a strong West, West, West Ham outfit. And we finished the month off three, three out of four wins, which we would have took that at the start of the month. So it was very pleasing, but the most disappointing aspect was the Wigan game because we didn't turn up against them. If February had been the month of love, for three points, March would be a month of draws with one certain centre forward making one very welcome goal-scoring habit. Sweeney will take this corner for Millwall, floats it into the back post, there's Quigley, he's unmarked, and there's Paul Robinson to stab it home from six yards out. Where was the marking for Leeds United as Millwall take the lead? Leeds piling everyone forward, there's Butler in attack, it falls to Hulse, Hulse tries to get away from Lawrence, Great turn, great shot by Rob Hulse. And that's his fourth goal since his lone move from West Bromwich Albion. Gregan looking to pick out Aaron Lennon, he's done well. Gary Kelly is charging up on the overlap and Kelly with a chance to pick out a white shirt. That's Walton, he couldn't get his shot away. And what trickery can Lennon produce here? The header over from Rob Hulse. Michael Flynn with a free kick for Gillingham, setting it up, it's deflected, and Gillingham will score. It's Chris Hope with a goal. Now Henderson trying to get away, and uh, he's throwing Michael Gray to the floor, and Gray doesn't like it, to say the very least of things. And this is getting rather ugly, Kevin Blackwell's in there, practically everybody is in there. And Gray is beside himself. Henderson can't really be surprised. I think both men have got to make the walk. Gillian down to 10. Leeds also down to 10. Michael Gray sent off for his part in the fight of the season so far. Not a handbag in sight. 
Here's Marlon King for Leeds. Last 10 minutes, desperate for an equaliser. It's King's ball. Oh, it's confusion. And it's put in. And United do have the equaliser. And it's Rob Hulse again. Rob Hulse's late equaliser was the striker's fifth goal in as many games since making his lone move to Elland Road. A move which was being relished by the former West Brom target man. I couldn't have had a better start. You know, the lads helped me fit in straight away. Kevin and the... Uh, the, the, the coaching staff were, were spot on with me and you know, I was just enjoying myself and, and just really um, enjoying coming into work and enjoying the games and uh, just nice to be back playing football again at such a massive football club. And back to the action, the draws continued away to struggling Nottingham Forest thanks to Neil Sullivan's fourth penalty save of the season. He denied Forest's Chris Commons and ensured the points were shared. That was pure luck actually, <laughs> that, just, that was just a guess, um, fortunately I've guessed the right way and, and, and I think he slipped as he, as he struck the ball. He had a free kick about 25 yards out before that and he, and he kind of called it well and smashed it and I kind of had an idea of the, of the way he was going to strike the ball, I wanted to strike the ball and, and you kind of get a, an inkling of what kind of player they are and, and how they like to strike a ball and that was pure guesswork actually that one and, and the slip as he, as he put his foot down kind of helped. So the draw at Forest ensured the four-match unbeaten run was still intact and Leeds remained in 10th with any realistic hopes of the playoffs slowly fading away but with much pride still to be played for. When we played Forest away, we had that game and we had the chance, we got the draw and then it was the next game when we thought, are we going to do it or not, you know what I mean? And, we, and it's when you start relying on other people's results and that's when you know that it's, it's too far now, do you know what I mean? And then the, the points were getting to double figures, it was like getting 10 points of adrift and, and then you're still trying to play for it because it's not mathematically over. but. In the back of your mind, you know what I mean? You think you can rely on everybody else. Before the shutdown of the final transfer window, there was just time for some final deals to be completed, which saw moves in both directions at Elland Road. Marlon King had arrived earlier in the month, and now Ian Moore joined from Burnley, with Brian Dean moving to Sunderland. Marlon gave us a, a situation where a lot of pace, and, and I felt we needed something different, and, and, and Ian Moore was someone who's a, a real hard worker, um, but as it always causes a problem and, and, and to be fair causes a problem at Burnley this year when we played up there so uh, uh, the money we were talking about £50,000 it was really uh, you know the chairman decided that we'd had so many debuts this year that I spoke to Ian and we would basically do something in the summer but he said no let's get him in now let's get him uh, indoctrinated within the club let him find his way around let him feel comfortable so when he comes back to pre-season we're not starting all over again with another new lad and uh, to be fair, the chairman was right, so we, we signed him and he's been a good signing. At the start of the March, we, we, we knew we were, we were in touching distance of the playoffs. Um, team, people were talking about us coming and they, they thought we were the team that was going to come out of the pack at Christmas and really push on. And we did ourselves and we knew it was a big month for us. This was the most important month of the year really for us. Um, because we had games that were winnable games for us that we should have been winning. Um, we played Gillingham at home, they went one up again, we drew one each again and then another team that was at the bottom of the league, the, the top bottom four and we didn't beat them, uh, dropped points against them. We uh, went away then to Forest, another team at the, in the bottom three uh, and disappointed ourselves again and another Neil Sullivan save. So if, if, you, look, if you look at the start of the month, we, we drew against Gillingham, we drew against Millwall, uh, was it Millwall? at home, and no way Millwall won it, Rob Hulls, uh, and we drew against Forest away, and we only took three points out of it, and we were really, really looking to pick up at least six out of them, uh, and really push us on, because it was, that was the international break, where no one else had played, and the Forest game was our game in hand, and a lot, not game in hand, but we, we, if we would have played one more game than anybody else, and if we would have won that, we would have been in the top seven or eight at the time, only won two points behind them. And that was the month that really, really killed us. And that stopped us, that's what I'd say anyway, that stopped us pushing on in the playoffs because it was a bit of a mountain to climb after that. With a return to league action after three weeks, the spring sunshine did little to change the recent run of results against Wolves, the draw specialists of the league. Naylor with the corner. It's on a bad ball in! And Court has scored for Wolves. Hulse trying to find a way through past Lescott. Here's Rob Hulse again! Can't quite find the target. Derry's shot. Oh, it's gone all the way through! And Sean Derry has equalised for United. 
Ian Moore inside the box. This is Marlon King, and it's off the line. Comes back to Delhi. Just too much to ask. I think the goalie lost his arms in the um, when, when the flight of the ball actually hit him. But um, I think it was fine. You know, they had finding Nemo in the net, so it was a case of um, he was flapping a bit. But once again, I was highly delighted that it, you know it was my second goal for the club, and hopefully there'll be a, a few more to follow. But for the fourth consecutive meeting, it was the Blades who took all three points in this one and claimed the Yorkshire bragging rights once again. It was a miserable evening at Elland Road as Leeds slumped to their worst defeat of the season at the hands of their local rivals. Thankfully, though, Paul Butler's clash with Neil Sullivan ended without any serious injury being sustained. Thankfully, the midweek horror show against the Blades was laid to rest at Vicarage Road. Patient approach played by Leeds United as they come again for Sean Derry. Into Bregan. Plays a lofted ball over the top for Rob Hulse. What a goal by Hulse. That's another to add to his impressive list already for Leeds United. Great ball over by Bregan. But what a header. The keeper had no chance. Oh. Into Gnarsson. Gnarsson gets away from Carlisle. Good save by Sullivan. But there's Helgerson. And Sullivan couldn't do anything about that one. And Watford a level. Derry with this free kick for Leeds. Headed out by Helgerson. But Leeds will pick it up again through Michael Gray. Now Kilgallen has a bit of space here. Puts it up to the back stick. Where Clark Carlisle rises highest and makes it 2-1 to Leeds United. Wonderful cross by Kilgallen. And with 23 minutes to go, Clark Carlisle makes it Watford 1, Leeds 2. It's great for team confidence, you know, when you put in a, a display like Sheffield United uh, and get a result like that, especially at home in front of your home fans, you, you really want to go out and put it right. And even though that pretty much terminated our season, you know, it meant, meant that we had definitely, mathematically, had nothing to play for. The lads have still got their professional pride, you know, and, and you're playing for yourself and your shirt and your club. So to go out against Watford and put in a, you know, it was a, it was a scrappy game, but it was a great performance on the back of that and a good result. It, it was excellent, excellent for team morale. Gary Kelly will take this corner for Leeds United. 24 minutes gone. He goes up, keeping our give away. Then as far as Johnson. And Seth Johnson scores for the first time since October 2003. What a moment for Seth Johnson. That's the last five minutes for that Loftus Road. Can Leeds United hold on? This looks dangerous as Kevin Gallon breaks into the box. Good save by Sullivan. He can't keep up the rebound though. As Kevin Gallon. It's a late equaliser for Queen's Park Rangers. Yeah, it's nice to be back. Um, it's been a frustrating time being out injured so long. Well, since I've been at Leeds, really, I've been injured more or less the whole time. So it's been a bit of a nightmare, so it's good to be back. With a visit of Ipswich, Leeds once again proved their worth against the leading sides with a comfortable draw against the promotion chasers, with Matthew Spring's goal ruling out Shevki Kuchi's strike just a minute earlier. I just feel that uh, the players that we've got now are starting to gel. Um, but uh, still, we're still talking half the team that played against Ipswich two games from the end of the season. Mickey Gray had played five times, uh, Gilfie Arneson's third game, Matthew Spring's third game, Ian Moore's third game, Marlon King's third game, Rob Holt's ninth game. So five of those players, six of those players in that team that played against Ipswich have only got single figure and low single figure numbers. And yet we were more than the match for Ipswich. We still had a slim chance, but we knew going into the Wolves game that Wolves had a chance as well, so a draw was no good for either team. I think Wolves had drew 20 games and we drew 17 games, so what was on the cards, a draw, uh, because we still had a slight chance of getting into the playoffs and so did Wolves. And We drew one each, went 1-0 down against a, a good team as well and we come back one each and we had chances to win the game. And then. We uh, get another home game on a Tuesday night, uh, probably our worst performance ever in a lead shirt, as you know, for, for the full team. And it was not a good night all around. I was getting beat 4-0 off Sheffield United and then me getting stretched off and missing games and 
it just summed up the night. It just summed up, especially when we old Sheffield United won from the start of the season. That really, really hurt, and it still hurt to this day. People say to me about uh, getting concussed and swallowing my tongue. That that didn't hurt. The four 0 defeat hurt. That that was it was terrible. And the lads bounced back though. We had we had a tough trip away to Watford. Then um, Adi Bouvray took over. He used to be first team coach here. Went down there. They were they needed the points desperately, so it was no favours asked for. And the lads put a good performance in, and they, they beat them two one. And well deserved. And Clark he scored the winner near the end. I know they had a player sent off, but um, the, by all accounts, the lads deserved the win. And then we went to QPR. I mean, it would be tough at QPR um, after what we've done to him early on in the season, beating him 6 1. We knew they'd be up for it. Uh, another full house, which is every away game had been this year for us. Um, kick off delayed. And then Seth Johnson scored his first goal of the season. Uh, great goal. And, but we couldn't hang on at the end. And another sending off of Sean Derry, um, which was disappointing because he misses the rest of the season now. So it's, it's lessons to be learned this season how many sending offs we've had because it's been vital players that have been missing games. And we, we can't afford that if we need to do anything. Um, and we got a draw out of the game, so and then we played one of the promotion favourites, Ipswich, uh, early on in the season when we got beat 1-0 down there. Um, we didn't deserve to get beat 1-0 down there, there was, there was more in it than the 1-0, we, we missed chances first half where we could have gone 2-3-0 up easily. Watching the game on Saturday, and you, wouldn't have, you wouldn't have known who was actually going for promotion and who was actually finishing mid-table. Um, that's how much improved we've come on since, since Christmas. So there's been a lot of positives from Christmas onwards really that we can build on. With Leicester kicking off the final month of the season, there seemed to be more than just one eye on next season, with Dion Dublin grabbing the first for the hosts before David Connolly wrapped it up for the Foxes. And with Rotherham the visitors, the final chapter in this season of change was completed and Ellen Road waved goodbye to another eventful campaign and a true Leeds United legend. Spring gets away from his marker. Matthew Spring into the box, just off the post. And that was easily Leeds United's best chance in this first half. Hulse now, hits it low, beats the keeper back off the post. Here's Richardson now with another chance for Leeds United. But somehow, the ball stays out and Rotherham clear. Holse again for Leeds. They come strong in the closing stages. Here's Carlisle. Not again. Back off the post from Clark Carlisle. So the final league table looked like this, with Leeds comfortably sat in mid-table and only a few wins away from the top six. So promotion may have been a bridge too far at the first time of asking, but Norman, there is hope for next season, isn't there? A real expectation that Ellen Road could get the good times back again. Well, hopefully, if, uh, if the manager's given the funds or he can get certain players that he said he wants, you know, we've got to get a bit of experience, because there's one thing you don't do is get up with kids. So a bit of experience brought in, few new players. I'm sure there'll be some come and go. There's nothing more certain than that because the one thing the manager has done, been good at wheeling and dealing. So in the summer, new faces. This is a hard division, it's not an easy division, it's not a great division, but it's a hard division to win games. So if we can get a settled side, get some better players in, then hopefully we can be up there or there and thereabouts. And uh, as you say, get this place buzzing again, because that's what we want. I think there's been so many positives. I think we've just stabilised, you know. A finish of 10th place, 9th place is, is an excellent base. That, uh, we had major hurdles to jump, which we've jumped. He's striving to achieve to get the club better all the time, and uh, he's done a great job. Being a little bit too gregarious uh, in the last six or seven years. Teams have gone on back-to-back uh, -back relegations, you know, and really struggled. I personally will not take the club down that route. The young kids coming through it have been absolutely tremendous. I can't speak early enough for them. And we've now got a new group of players that we know can play in the championship. We are sleeping giant at the moment. There's a lot of ambition here. The support has been fantastic. Promotion, title, you name it. We're going to have a good go at it next year. Just finally, Chairman, your message to the fans who are watching this, what would you say? 
first of all, thank you for buying the DVD. We need the money. Uh, secondly, I hope that you have an entertaining area. And thirdly, we are going to go back to where we belong. But be patient and be supportive. Thanks very much.